Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a power supply that can power different vacuum tube circuits. This power supply will contain transformers to supply vacuum tube circuits with filament voltage and B plus voltage at varying voltages. So, let's get started. So this part up here in my circuit diagram, this is the isolation power supply that I made in my previous video. And so what I've done is I've taken wires that go from the 110 and uh, 0 volts straight from the wall, and I've attached it to a cord that is from a computer power supply. As seen in the schematic, the switch lacks between 200 and 110 volts. So when this is on 200 volts, and this switch is in the up position, then you get 200 volts on B+. Then if you switch this to 110 volts, you get 110 volts on B+. And then, also, if you flip the switches here, you have to make sure this switch is on 110. Then you can select between 150 and 277 volts by using this auto transformer. So the first thing I need to do is take apart this isolation transformer power supply that I built in the previous video. So that way I can attach this um, female connector and this single pole double throw switch. Now this will go right here inside my power supply so that way I can easily plug in my vacuum tube power supply to this isolation transformer power supply. So now I have modified my original uh, isolation transformer power supply. So it still works as originally made, but I've also added this little switch on here according to the circuit diagram. And this should power my other vacuum tube power supply. This vacuum tube power supply plugs in to the modified isolation power supply via this uh, cord. So now the first thing that we need to do to get started on this power supply is build the base and the switches and install the transformers. I have two double throw double pole switches on here mounted to this aluminum faceplate and a neon light to indicate when this power transformer is running. And then I have five screws bolted into here that will serve as my electrical contacts for hooking these up to my tube amps and radios. So these three screws are going to be hooked up to the filament voltages, and these two screws are going to be hooked up to the B+. So here I'm going to have three transformers, my two filament transformers, which go straight to the AC, which is line voltage, not isolated voltage, coming from the cord. And these go straight into the filament transformers, and the filament transformers will be wired directly to these screws. Now, the B-plus voltage will go through these different switches, so I can select which taps on this most useful power transformer to use, so that way I can get varying voltages out of here. So pretty much what these switches do is they allow me to switch between 200 volts, 110 volts, 150 volts, and 277 volts on the B-plus. I will also install this bridge rectifier, and this um, smoothing capacitor so that way I can have smooth B plus voltage for use in vacuum tube circuits. So this is the finished product of my vacuum tube power supply. As you can see I have all of the voltages written on the front and I'm sorry for the bad handwriting but I was um, writing those quickly as I was testing the voltages coming from this power supply. In the back you can see all the electronics and all the wiring that makes this power supply work as it does. It's The wiring inside is quite complex. Now to test the voltages. As you can see I have a 33,000 ohm resistor right here and this resistor is acting as a load resistor so that way we can um, see the actual voltages on the voltmeter because when it's just the power supply running without a load the voltage is much higher than it is loaded. Now to test the voltages. The first thing I will do is I will plug in my tube power supply 
into this um, isolated power supply. And I will set the selector switch to low, which means that between these two wires, there's only going to be 110 volts coming out. I will then set this switch to power set by the PSU, and since the PSU is on low, I will be getting 150 volts out. As you can see, this is correct. When the power supply is set to high, though, the voltage goes up to 260 volts, which is stated by the numbers on the switch. But now to get more voltages, if I set this selector switch back down to low, and set this switch down to the two next switch part, then I will be getting 280 volts, as you can see here. But when I set the selector switch to 170 volts, I will be getting that on my voltmeter. And also, when my power supply is connected to my voltmeter through the filament taps of 12 volts, I get approximately 13 volts on my multimeter, which will go down once, a once an actual vacuum tube is connected. But when connected to the 6 volt taps, it gives 9.8 volts, which goes down to 6.3 volts once a vacuum tube is connected. So overall, this is a good power supply. It can supply high voltages at relatively high amperages, and it works, and it looks very good. So, to any of you out there who are going to build my power supply, I would highly recommend that you um, exercise caution, because this power supply can produce high voltages at lethal amperages, so if you touch the two connections on here, you would potentially die. So, good luck on building your high voltage vacuum tube power supply, and good luck on your future vacuum tube projects. In the future, I will be using this vacuum tube power supply to power many of my vacuum tube experiments. So, thank you for watching and please subscribe.